right, we're going to go ahead. And All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, good morning to everyone, and I call the hearing to order. I want to thank the witnesses um, on both panels. We will have two panels today um, who are testifying, and we certainly appreciate their their attendance and participation in this important subcommittee hearing. Although the health care law won't be fully implemented until 2014, businesses are already feeling the effects. A study released this week by the National Federation of Independent Businesses found that small firms are worried that the law could lead to higher taxes, more administrative burdens, and bigger budget deficits without lowering costs or making Americans healthier. Under the law, many small business owners will be required to offer coverage to their employees or pay a penalty. And the small business tax credit that has been touted to offset the cost of health insurance is, in reality, a temporary and a narrow one, where the full credit applies only to the smallest of businesses. If your firm has more than 25 employees, you are one of the 23 million self-employed you qualify for no credit whatsoever. We have heard small businesses are concerned that regulatory requirements on insurers such as the medical loss ratio may drive some carriers out of the market, resulting in fewer options and premium hikes. Small firms are uncertain about whether they will be able to continue offering coverage. If so, at what cost, and if not, what their penalties will be and what the coverage w will cost taxpayers. This is all, all while our economy is still very fragile, an economy that is adding fewer jobs than forecast and still has a high unemployment rate. In this environment, it is not surprising that small business owners continue to be hesitant to create jobs, expand or invest, and there are more regulations ahead. During the health care debate, one of the most repeated assurances was that if you like your current health care coverage, you would be able to keep it. However, for a number of reasons, a small business may be driven out of its current plan. The Department of Health and Human Services predicts that over half of all employers and up to 80% of small firms may relinquish grandfather status by 2013. This means that small business owners and workers may be forced to switch to a higher price plan or drop insurance altogether. Although the goal of health care although the goal of the health care law may have been to make health care insurance more accessible, its taxes, mandates, regulations, and administrative burdens are causing many small businesses, our best job creators, to postpone hiring and expanding. Again, I thank the witnesses who are here with us today for participating. I look forward to hearing their input on how we can help to reduce the impact of some of the health care law's uncertainty, mandates, regulations, and requirements for our small businesses. I now yield to Ranking Member Richmond for his opening statement. 